Okay, so this video is going to be an introduction to moment gener generating functions. So, moment generating functions, and this is the wrong pen. Uh, moment generating functions. Okay, uh, so the often abbreviated MGF. Now, the moment generating function is just another uh, another way of representing a probability distribution, just like uh, the CDF and the uh, PDF were ways of representing uh, the uh, probability distribution. The moment generating function is another way. Uh, so, um, if you have this is the setup, we are our uh, familiar setup. We have a abstract probability space over here, and we have some. Uh, random variable big X which is mapping this onto the real numbers and uh, we call this new probability space the primed probability space omega prime f prime and p prime and uh, the uh, p prime over here the probability space structure on this uh, uh, sample space of real numbers is basically inheriting the probability space structure of this abstract probability space and it's called a probability distribution. So P prime is a probability distribution and we know that there are lots of ways of representing uh, all the information that you need in order to derive the probability distribution uh, such as the uh, PMF in the case of discrete random variables, uh, the CDF in the case of both discrete and continuous random variables and the uh, PDF, the probability density function in the case of uh, continuous random variables. Uh, now another one in the case of continuous random variables is the moment generating function and the setup is basically this. You have some outcome in the abstract probability space, uh, you map it onto a real number x of s and now what we do is uh, we map it onto another, another, uh, another, um, another real number, so you map it onto e to the power of t times x of s and then what you do is you take the expected value of this random variable so you view this as being a random variable and then what you do uh, y which is a function of t so it depends on what t you have and basically if you take the expected value of y of t that is going to be the moment generating function so the moment generating function is defined to be the expected value of e to the t times uh, the random variable x. So basically, uh, you take in uh, every every value, every outcome in your original abstract probability space is mapped onto a real number by this random variable x. Uh, you, uh, f for each, uh, the moment generating by function, by the way, is abbreviated m of little t. For each t is an element of the real numbers, you uh, define another mapping which is going to map each value of x of t in here onto e to the power of t times x of s rather x of s this should have been uh, and basically that defines a new random variable uh, so you can take the ra uh, which is a function of t this random variable is a function of t and basically you take the expected value of that random variable and uh, get a number uh, which is a function of t so m is a function which maps the real num line onto the real line and the way it's specifically going to do it is it's going to map a little t onto the value of the expected value of e to the t uh, of x. Okay, uh, so let's see uh, the relation of the moment generating function uh, to the moments. Uh, so firstly you can't yet uh, uh, understand uh, why this is important uh, but hopefully you understand uh, where it comes from and that at least you can actually do it so you hopefully understand the definition now uh, so uh, now let's see how it's related to the moments uh, so we will take the moment generating function m of little t is defined to be equal to the expected value of e uh, to the t x of s okay uh, so uh, if we expand this uh, then we get that uh, this this function e to the t of x of s can be expanded using uh, the uh, Taylor series. Uh, so we get that it's equal to a 1 uh, plus uh, t times x of s uh, plus x of s uh, squared. Uh, sorry, uh, yes, x of s squared uh, t squared over 2 factorial uh, plus dot dot dot. So this is because the expect uh, the e e to the x, if you have e to the x, it's a function of the real line that looks something like this, then e to the x, for all real numbers x, 
uh, is equal to the series 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial uh, plus x cubed over 3 factorial. That series converges for all x to the value of e of x. Okay, uh, so uh, this is a function mapping certain values of real, uh, of real numbers, uh, mapping certain real numbers. So I'll redraw the picture. We have our abstract probability space being mapped onto our real numbers. So an outcome here is going to x of s. And then what we are doing is we are mapping x of s onto uh, the exponential uh, t x of s. And basically, this is still a real number. x of s is a real number. So t times x of s is a real number. So e to the t of x of s is equal to 1 plus, and now we put t of x of s into here, and we get 1 plus t of x times x of s plus t squared x of s squared over um, 2 factorial, uh, and it goes on. Okay, uh, so now what we can say is that uh, the moment generating function of t is the expected value of this function, 1 plus t x of s uh, plus t squared x of s squared over 2 factorial, and of course plus uh, t cubed over 3 factorial uh, the x of s cubed, etc. Now, uh, we have proven linearity, but we have not proven linearity for an infinite series. Uh, I am not, neither am I going to prove linearity for an infinite series. Uh, but uh, linearity does work for an infinite series. Uh, so this becomes the expected value of the random variable 1 plus T is just a uh, uh, t is just a constant as far as the expected value is concerned. Uh, so we can pull that out and get t times the expected value of x of s, but that's just the expected value of x plus t squared over two factorial times the expected value of x squared plus etc. T cubed over three factorial, the expected value of x cubed, and that is why it's called the moment generating function uh, because if you take uh, the Taylor expansion around uh, t is equal to zero. So if you take the moment generating function and take uh, Taylor expansion uh, centered at t is equal to zero, which is also called the Maclaurin expansion, uh, then the coefficients of uh, the of each of each of the terms is going to are going to have the form e of x to the n over n factorial. And if you remember uh, back to calculus, uh, the coefficients of the Taylor expansion have the form uh, the derivative, the nth derivative with respect to t n of this function m of t evaluated at t is equal to zero divided by n factorial. So that implies that the nth derivative of the moment generating function evaluated at zero is equal uh, to the nth moment of your random variable x. Okay, so that's the relation of the moment generating function to the uh, exponential. Uh, another way of seeing that it's, uh, uh, sorry, the moment generating function to the moments of the random variable. Uh, so another way of seeing that uh, the uh, moment generating function is related to the moments of a random variable is that uh, is you can just apply Lotus. If we want the expected value of e t x, uh, then we can apply uh, Lotus, which says that the expected value of g of x is just equal to the integral from negative infinity to infinity of uh, g of x times uh, the probability density function for x, so f x of little x uh, dx. Uh, so, um, and this just says take every possible value of x, integrate over these, and take g of little x of that value. So in this case, we get the integral from negative infinity to infinity of e to the t little x, uh, the probability density function, uh, which it will just say is uh, f of um, x, x, dx, where this is a big x and this is a little x. So that's denoting that it's the probability density function uh, for the random variable big x. And x little x is the parameter that we are uh, varying. Uh, so if we just expand e to the tx now using the Taylor expansion, uh, we get that this is the integral from negative infinity to infinity of 1 plus uh, t plus t squared, oh well, sorry, tx uh, plus tx squ t squared x squared over 2 factorial uh, plus t cubed x cubed over 3 factorial, etc. So uh, dot 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 uh, times 
uh, f of big X of X uh, dx. Now, if we expand this out, if we uh, apply the distributive property again, uh, it's a bit irky that the distributive property... Uh, uh, well, uh, the, no, the distributive property works, uh, for even though this is an infinite series. And so I can certainly say that this is the integral from negative infinity to infinity of... Um, uh, of um, you know, I can distribute this. So I can say that this is the sum r is equal to zero uh, to infinity of um, x uh, t x to the power of r over r factorial, and I can bring this within the summation f x of little x, and then I can have outside that d x. Uh, but what is a bit more fishy is why can I interchange the order of this summation and this integral? Uh, so I can. Uh, but I'm not going to justify it. It's uh, a quite uh, a bit of quite complicated analysis. If you want to see that uh, complex analysis, which does loads of this, uh, the sum from r is equal to zero to infinity of the integral from negative infinity to infinity of uh, t x uh, to the r over r factorial uh, times the uh, probability density function f of little x of big X rather of little x uh, d x. And this then, this here, is the expected, for, well, it pull out the t to the r and uh, the r factorial, and this is equal to t to the r over r factorial times the expected value of x to the r, basically, and we're summing that over r is equal to zero to infinity. So that gives us the same result from another angle. Okay, uh, there's another theorem about moment generating functions that is incredibly difficult to prove. I mean, this is up there with, you know, proving the Fourier transform, uh, which is that if you give me a moment generating function, a moment generating function m of t, that it uniquely specifies a probability distribution. That basically, each probability distribution, we know certainly that each probability distribution has a moment generating function. We don't know uh, that every mo that this moment generating function is unique, i.e. if you have a probability uh, space that has a certain moment generating function, there is only a single probability distribution uh, which does have that, mo uh, that uh, as its moment generating function. Uh, but that it does hold true. So it is another representative of the probability, uh, another way of representation of the probability distribution up there with the CDF and the PDF. Um, and another really useful property, why would we want this as a representation over the CDF or the PDF? Well, the reason is uh, that if we take uh, two random variables, so if we take an abstract probability space uh, which has uh, two random variables defined on it, x and y, uh, which are both mapping them, uh, well, both of these random variables are mapping this abstract probability space onto the real line over here. And we want to know, uh, we want to know uh, what is, uh, we want to know what the random variable x plus y, uh, what that probability distribution is like. Well, it, the moment generating functions have a very, very beautiful property uh, because the moment generating function uh, for x plus y of t is going to be equal to the expected value of e to the t x plus y. But this is equal to the expected value of e to the t x times the expected value of t y, e to the t y. And in later videos, we will prove that providing x and y are independent, so x and y are independent, uh, that the expected value of two uh, random variables like this, and e to the t of x is a random variable, and e to the t of y is a random variable. Uh, the expected value of two random variables multiplied together, providing they are independent. So in fact, actually, we want the expected value of t of x and the expected value of t of y uh, to be independent. Um, that providing these are independent, uh, that uh, e, uh, that the expected value of this is equal to the expected value of e to the tx times the expected value of e to the ty. Now, this is just the moment generating function of x, and this is just the moment generating function of y. So basically, you get that the moment generating functions just multiply together, which is very nice. Uh, because working out the probability distribution, uh, well, working out the probability distribution for the random variable x plus y is not trivial. Uh, but uh, as far as combining their uh, moment generating functions are, is concerned, uh, the addition of the two random variables is trivial.